Hi, Joe here over at woollycottage.com and it is time for the announcement of February's Art Bat Story uh, Art <laughs> It's time for the Storyteller Art Bat's um, votes and announcements. Okay, so I've written them down. So we ended up with Morocco Spice Market, Enchanted Forest, which was my contribution to it, though I'm feeling a little bit guilty. Uh, Star Trek and Northern Lights and Wildflower Garden. Okay, so those were the entries. That's what people um, voted for out of the 14 subscribers that we've got to the platform, members that we've got on the platform. So it'd be brilliant if we could get a bit more next next month. But well done on the voting, because this week I've not had to put the blinking titles in a bowl. Um, so the scores are Morocco Spice Market, two. Star Trek, two. Northern Lights, one. Wildflower Garden, two. An Enchanted Forest by an overreach of four votes. And I honestly, I didn't vote for my own. I actually voted for Moroccan Spice Market. And if you don't believe me, you can check down on the scrolls. So what I thought I'd talk to you quickly about before I go downstairs, it's Dye Pot Thursday, um, is the fibres that I'm going to be using for this bat. So these are the colours that we have got for the spice. Now... I've cut off the colours on my chart, so um, I'll have to have a look. But it's definitely got um, these maroony colours in there, and it's got different shades of green. And there was, I think, there was some more terracotta brown sort of colours like sandy. But I will, I'll find the print and I'll print it off properly. I've only just realised it's not on there properly, and it should be. I did do it properly. I don't know why it's not come out. So anyway, we've got these mushrooms and these colours here. Okay, there should be five colours in there. So I definitely need to print off the individual ones. And then you've got this woodland glow of the sun coming through, which is always really pretty if you're in there at a certain time of the day. So we've got these rosy, dusky colours. Then it goes into this chocolatey aubergine and then into these colours of greens. This one had a different variety of shades of greens. And then this one's... So we're looking at more or less a dominant colour of green in here at least on two of them and then we'll abstract off down the coffee sort of toffee sort of route for the mushrooms so the fibers i'm going to be using today is going to be luxury blends okay this is llama love and i've just wrote down my, the figures right so llama love is a blend of 33.33 percent of white face woodland wool okay it's really lovely and you can feel what the next fiber that's in there because obviously i'm used to it it's 33.3 percent of rami or it's actually a nettle fiber okay so it's a plant-based fiber and then after that we've got 16.67 percent of white de-haired llama <clears throat> and 16.67 percent of bamboo now remember we were talking about ratios of the week there so you've when you want to blend you've got to think you're always constantly thinking about the ratios and what the effect's going to do so i thought i'll pair this with an even more luxurious wool now this one is famed because it's got the it's got the the welsh wool in there from the white face um uh yeah the, the woodland white face wool it's nice and bouncy and it'll give you a really gorgeous spun wool. But you've got the extra strength from the rame and from the bamboo. But the de-haired llama gives it a bit more softness to that. So with that, I will be dyeing up some of this to go in with these colours. OK, so I can use these as my highlight colours because it's very expensive. <laughs> it's got 50%, 14.5% micron count super fine merino 20 percent alpaca 20 percent silk and 10 percent cashmere so it's really is a very very fine wool and joan you were asking about dyeing cashmere the other week this is how i would do it. i'd never dye cashmere on its own it will die but i would rather dye it in a ratio in a blend okay or in your case blend it all up in a nice ratio of wool with something else and then spin it up and then dye it from the questions and answers that we had that you got at the weekend so then i thought you know what instead of handing angelina because i've got x amount of colors of pinks i've got greens i've got golds and everything else why don't i put in some super bright 
trilobal or fire star it's known in overseas some countries call it fire star but it's trilobal it's a nylon base so you've got the little bit of stretch in there you've got the white uh, you've got the rame and you've got the bamboo in there as well but you've got lots of luxury softness fibers that are going to go in with this bat and not just that it means that when i dye it up i can put it in the pot when i'm dyeing the wool and i will get the color that i'm already dyeing sometimes it splits it can be a little bit unpredictable, depending on what your, your dyes are. Some dyes like to split and break out with their base colour from underneath. But that will catch that, you see. And it's a brilliant little add-in to add when you need to get out the last of your dye stock out your pot. It will soak up all that saturation. So this is a really good one to have in your dye pot mix of fibres, just to have to one side. is a, a nylon. Um, a denier nylon that you can buy or a trilobal because you will find a use for it that you can use in some sort of blending um so yeah so these are what the fibers that are going in there and um <clears throat> i will um go and have a look and see if i can get this picture printed up and i'll show you when i'm downstairs with the dye pots in a little bit so i hope you enjoyed this video um and i will don't forget to hit the like when it's over on the YouTube channel, on the YouTube, don't forget hit like because even though it's linked to you guys only, those likes definitely do still count and so do any type of comments if you want to leave one underneath there. Okay, you don't have to leave them on Patreon only. You can add them to the YouTube because they do because it's still being watched. So even after three minutes of watching a video, that counts in part of my analytics. Under three minutes, it doesn't. So even by liking a video, um, and leaving a comment it still works even though it's a private video for you guys okay so i figured out what the problem was with the printer it was um not printing the right way so I catch all the colors so in this one one you've got this gray color and then you've got a like a teddy bear brown sandy color and you've got this green leaf and you've got this soft green and then on this one the more whimsical version you've got these pinks going into mauves and then this aubergine into these darker shades of green and then this one you've got a very sandy color greens toffee colors and then into a coffee so the one i'm going to deal with first is this one using the llama blend and the luxury blend with the cashmere uh, the rami the super fine merino and the silk okay so that's what we're going to get on with so i've got some dyes already done and i've laid out my tray with the citric acid already in there okay so we'll do that down there and i'll just get the heat on there now just ever so low i'm just going to grab my pots of dye stock so i've gone with a very very soft shade of a dusky pink So we'll massage that in a minute. And at the same time, just down the side here, which is something that I do quite a lot if I want my add-in fibres to blend in with the colours I'm dyeing, is actually just up the side here is that luxury blend that I've just mentioned. So I'm going to go with the darker version of this. Hopefully it's dye stock, so this is a stronger pigment of the one I've just put up there. that one we'll massage it in a minute and then i've gone for a chocolate brown for the bottom there we go so i'm just going to stick that to one side because there's still quite a bit left in there and i'm just going to massage that into these fibers now i've done it in this way because i want it to be a gradient because i'm going to obviously use the colors like that in there i don't want a wool that's going to have bits and short gradients in between i need the wool to be really quite um, even and longer pieces because the way that it's going to get blended okay so there's the darker solution there let's make sure this side there's the fibre there, the extra piece. Oh, a sec. There you go. 
So that's the extra, the posh stuff with the silk in that in there and the cashmere. So we're just going to let that, just give that a second and I'll turn the heat down on that. Now in this one, now this is an enameled pot and I would never say to you to use an enamel pot, but it's an old pot. The enamel's starting to erode off the bottom of it and I use it for doing my, um, you can see all the stains on there, for doing my neps and things like that. So I've just added in, because of the picture that we had, we've got these darker, these darker greens on there. So with the Firestar, the trilobal, I'm going to, I put citric acid in it because you still put citric acid in even if you are using a, a nylon. I'm just going to turn that heat down on that now. Um, I've added a forest green and I've got an avocado green as well. So the forest green's in there now. I just need to go and find the contact with trial over and I'll put it to one side. Oh. And these won't go to waste. I will reuse these in other things. So I'm not just going to put it straight in there. It'll soak up that dye as much as it can with its follicles. Um, I need the tongs. Bear with me a sec, they're up here. Just poke that fibre in there. So it looks like that at the moment, but that's it adhering to that fibre really quickly but we want a really strong dark green with that so this is going to be predominantly a muted dusky tones of pinks into this lovely brown and then we're going to use the greens from the picture as highlights because to me in my eye when I'm looking at that picture this one here it's mostly pinks that I'm seeing and different dimensions of pinks. So I'm going to use the greens as a highlight because there's not a lot of it in there. Um, and then use these softer tones um, in the actual blend itself. And already up the top there, that dye is starting to penetrate into those fibres. The water is practically clear up that top end. How are we doing with the darker version? Yeah, that needs a little bit longer on that heat. And then I'll move my tray up so that these browns down here will get seen too. And it's a lovely, a lovely brown. So it does now and again split and I get different tones of it, but I don't mind. I think it's quite pretty when it does that. So I'm just going to turn that heat down a little bit more. And you can see where the brown's starting to peek into that magnolia can start to take on those hues. And we want this to have a darker section. I'm just going to splash that dye stock over that area there we go just give them a little bit more room to breathe because we know that this section's already died in that clear water up there just give this a bit more space to get into all those fibers i'm just going to push this over a little bit so that my brown starts to strike on that fiber as well now you could soak the, because it's weird fibers and not just wool you could soak it in the sink for a good couple of hours with a little bit of washing up detergent. It'll help that stick to those fibres a little bit more. It's not necessary, but sometimes you, when you're using, especially with the silks um, and the cashmere and things like that, adding just a little bit of fairy, fairy washing up liquid or whatever it is that you use um, where you live. I think one in America is called Dawn. So just add a tiny, tiny squirt into your water and even the smallest amount will help adhere that into. So I'm going to say, I've still got some of this brown stock left, so I'm going to save some of that, save the last of that for, it might work in another dye and I need to do in a bit. So this is going to be relatively quick today because I'm going to dye them all like this um, in their colour gradients and then I'm going to... Um, 
add the roving of luxury fibre up the side and then do the fire start in here. So all three of these are going to be from the same wool batch or fibre batch and there's, they're just going to look different. Right, so that dye stock's practically gone and there we go, we've got this lovely rich green colour. So I'm just going to take that off and put that straight into the sink. Turn this ring down and I'm going to now add in a dash of forest green. Or oh, the other one must have been avocado that I've just used, but I just want a dash of forest green, not a lot. Literally that. I've misplaced my spoons today, so I've had to look, look at an old teaspoon and let that just dissolve in that water. Okay, add in the trilobal straight into that water. There we go. Straight away it starts to strike. See? Let that take up that. And what I might actually do is do another one of those um, trilobals, but not in green, but in a mauve because that was on the picture. So I'll go and take them and put some of mauve. Antique mauve. Put my other green dye back in its box. You can still see that pink in there, so I need a bit, a bit longer. But what I could do is go and get some citric acid and add that in just to help evaporate that. And just put in a little dash more than what I put in to start with. So just pour it over the top of the areas where the dye hasn't saturated away. Okay, so this is nearly done now, but my green's done. And it's turned out this lovely emerald colour, and I'm just going to quickly, where's my pot, up, pot back on, grab another piece to try logo and dye that a lovely tone of mauve. So I'll just turn the pot back on, turn that down a bit. There we go. Take out a dash of mauve and put that in there. Maybe a little bit of dash more. There we go. I'll put that away. Grab some trilobal. I'll piece that up here. Grab my tweezers, tongs, and throw in. I'm going to try it low bulb. This is nearly saturated all the colour in there. Makes me very happy. There we go. All the pink's gone. Out the pot. See, it's all clear. And again there. So you've got these different hints of colours in there. It's Oh, look, you've got a little bit of white under there where it's not actually struck. Hold on a second. Let me see. The pour, oh, I've still got some dye stock in the bottom of this pot. I pour that on there. Essentially, 
should end up that's not too bad i don't mind that but that was a bit too white for my liking let me just see i've got some more dye stock solution still left in this one try and get that just to strike a little bit more this one yep that's fine yeah i wasn't happy with that being so much white so i'll just pour it straight into the water there we go just give that a few more minutes to say that bit's done bring that down here and this one's a lot paler so that's fine i've got a problem with that It won't take long because it's not got no dye in it. See, it has gone already. Completely evaporated into that fibre already. So that's ready to go in. And that has struck already. I think that's practically done. So I'll just turn this off. And we'll get on with this. There we go. A lovely mauve coloured trilobal. So it matches the colourway. Finding Angelina is brilliant. It is a really handy um, bag of bits to have in your stock or in your stash. Okay, but when it comes to colour coordinating your sparkly stuff to your actual dye drovings that you want to make, having in a bag or trilobal is brilliant because you're going to get the exact same dye pot colourway as what you wanted. So it all sort of blends in there and it feels like it's supposed to be there. Sometimes you can have, you know, like, there's certain limited colours that you can get with Angelina, your silver, your golds. you got this really bright, vivid green, which is all right, but I don't always want a vivid green. And it's not a colour that I use that often, though I have got some of my stash. I think I've had it for about four years and I've still got over half a bag left. It's not a colour that sells well in my colour mixes. Um... And not the green Angelina, I've got bright red, like a scarlet red, which again is a colour that you don't use that often. Um, it seems to pop out really quite loudly, even if you do it on a blue base with red in there or orange or something like that. So having Trilobal or Firestar, you can get the suit, you can get the bright stuff or the not standard stuff. Having that in your stash is a brilliant way to be able to just make up some sparkly things that are gonna go really, really well with what you're working with, okay? Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is this one, the mushroom one, okay? So I really need to make, get an orange and add in a bit of brown to it, and then the same with a yellow and add a little bit of brown to it to get these toffee colors. I would need to find a mossy colored green and I need this gray sort of fawn color, but I've got, I think I'm going to play with some colours, but we're going to use the big pot for this one, okay? So there may be times where I'll have to stop and start and lift you up so you can see what it is that I'm doing. But I am going to do a big pot version of this one. And what I'm going to do is get my roving that I have. Okay. And I need to think about distribution of colours so what I'm going to do with my roving is try and get five equal portions because I've got five colours and then chisel that around a little bit so that's one two three four and there's my fifth bit so I need to just lift those up a bit to start creating an even even amount of wool all right, this goes up a little bit more, bring that one down, and that one. Right, so that's roughly about even. So I've got five, one, two, three, four, five, oh, six portions, that's too much, hold on a sec. One, two, three, four, five. Right, so I need to bring this up, this one down, this one up, this one down. And then again, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, bring that up a little bit more. That one there. There we go. Roughly, it works. Works for me. So I'm just going to layer these over here in my tray where all my ready wills are. 
and then I'm going to pull each portion out. Oh, I'm sorry, cut the side of my sorry. I'm going to pour the, put them into here. So the first colour I'm going to try and get is um, where we are. Where we are. I have got Sanji, but I want it. I don't want it completely sandy coloured. I need just the tiniest hint of grey in it though it has if you look at the colour of it, it has got a grey pigment to it so i'm going to add that in a little bit more let that just smell i don't want i don't need a lot of it because there's only a little bit of wool that i'm going to be soaking so that's in there and I think I'm going to be really, really careful. I don't think, hold on a second, I have. I've got that Dharma Set dye, that grey, but I really have to be careful with this because it's super strong and powerful. So if I just literally grab, if you can see, there's two little grains on there. And I'm going to put that in. Yeah, and you can see it breaking up. And it will change the pigment just a tiny bit. I really don't want to go silly with it because it's such a strong colour. But to mix up your colours, I always advise using a grey to help just alter the shade of your, your dyes. Okay, so I'm going to get this piece first. And where do we say? Up to here. And then I'm going to put that in that water. I may need to add in a little bit more. We'll see how it goes. And turn the heat down a little bit. It's looking awful peely wally. So I think I'll add in a little bit more of the sand dune colour. Just a touch. It's a very pale pigment dye anyway, so I don't have to worry too much. And I think I'll again just a couple of little extra grains of this grey to help that hue that I'm looking for. I'm sure I added some citric acid to that, but I'm going to add a little bit more. Once the heat starts to come up on the top, your dyes will start to strengthen out and get stronger looking. I'm just going to add in some extra citric acid. Yeah, if you look, if you look here, there, that that's a mushroom brown. So I want the sandy colour to just look a little bit darker. I mean, I'm never going to get it exactly the same colour pigment that's on there but I might well get as close to it as possible which is the whole point really um so what is she going to do with the other piece the one with the luxury fibres I'm not sure yet um I'll see what these look like as I go along and then I'll have a think about while I'm doing it what I'm going to do with that other one I might just dye it or really the, oh, what's it, the luxury fibre with the cashmere and the silk and everything in it and the rami, I might just, um, oh, alpaca, sorry, not rami, rami's in this, um, I might just dye that a solid colour as well, but a nice complementary colour that really seems to stand out lovely on the picture, but I don't have a lot of it when I'm dyeing it like this. So, hold on a second and I'll lift you up so you can have a bit of a look. So there's the pot, just simmering away. It's coming up to a nice temperature now and the dye is starting to strike in. It doesn't look, it doesn't look that strong at the moment. So I don't want it to be massively strong. I want a colour to strike in there, but I, need, I don't need a bold colour because that's not what I'm looking for. But the water's starting to come to optimum temperature now. So that dye that's in there will start to break up and open up its molecules and start to saturate more into that and you'll get a stronger pigment as that heat comes up. So this is a 10 litre pot and I always half fill it with liquid. So you can see that the fibres have all opened up, haven't they? So it means that the dye penetration is a lot better than it is doing it in a tray where it's laid down, there's not a lot of water. You haven't got a deep water bath the majority of the time when you're dying. Um, so it's all the fibres are squashed up, hence I was getting those white patches.
but if I'd done that gradient colorway in the big pot I'd have ended up without not worrying about the streaking colors and the white underneath it'd have ended up with a more um, solid colorway or at least semi-solid but the fibers would have been open so that all the dye could penetrate all the way through it's like waiting for paint to dry isn't it ladies So I'll um, come back to you when I'm going on to the next colourway and we'll catch up in a sec. Right, so I'm just going to turn this heat down a little bit. So there is the mushroomy colour that I've ended up with. So you can just see it over there. You'll see it properly once it's all dried when I do the actual blending on these videos. So let me just pull out the next section I need. I'll put that in there and pull that down a little bit. Now, the next one was a green colour. I'll just put that in there a bit more. There we go, a nice green colour. And I've, what I've done is, I never had quite the colour in my dye collection that I needed. So I've ended up adding in a, a dash of lichen with some avocado green. And hopefully that will give me the green pigment that's not too dark and overwhelming that goes with that one. So it's not near perfect, but it's not far off. And I'm quite happy with that because I do have some darker greens upstairs that I can add into this blend if I feel it's needed. So that one is now in the pot, simmering away. The pot's at its optimum temperature. It's not boiling, it's not simmering, but it's at the temp that it needs to be for all those pigments to start breaking up in the molecules and soak themselves and adhere to those fibres. And we're just going to give that probably about five minutes or so you don't want to sit here for five minutes watching me do this so we'll catch on the next colour okay so i dyed off that green i'll just bring it around so you can see it and it's ended up this lovely darker green that i was hoping for but not too dark or too light that it was going to look odd with the pictures that i've got now i've just been experimenting with some of my trilobal some colour mixes to get this toffee colour in the middle, that golden colour. So I've got some um, Moroccan orange. So I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to add in, let me just check if I've mixed it with something. Yeah, that is the one I want. I'm going to mix it in with a tobacco leaf dye. Just a tad, just to bring out those other pigments. And then ever so subtly, uh, a dash of chocolate brown. Just the tiniest little pigment just to bring down those oranges a bit. So we'll put that in there. I'm going to give this a little stir around. And hope for the best that we come up with a really lovely colour. Okay. So how much have we got left of that? Yep, that's fine. So we've got two more colours after this one. Push that back down in there. But I might end up just doing the one and going for the toffee colour and then using, yeah, I think I will actually. I'll do quite a bit of that one and I'll save the luxury fibre to do in a teddy bear brown or even a olive brown as well just so we've got that contrasting colour with that, that roving. So I'll take you off and you can see. Oh. So there's the green and there is that golden brownie sort of colour that will start to come out. Yeah, I tried to experiment with a bit of yellow over there, gold, and it wasn't quite the one I was looking for. There's the teddy bear brown in the Angelina and then this is the more or less the comparison that I've gone for so that might actually end up being the secondary colour because look if you look at that it's more orangey brown and that second to bottom one is an orangey brown so that might actually do for that colour and the other one I will have to really think about what colour I'm going to go with to mix with it to get that golden brown hue Okay, so that is that orangey colour which has taken more of a brown hue. So what I've done, before all the dye saturated into that and made it even darker, I've popped in the rest of the wool into the pot 
and added in a little bit of a um, a really light yellow, which is giving this more of a golden hue. Um, there we go. You can't quite see it in this light, but it's got that goldy colour which we were hoping for for the first time round. So that's fine. We've got it. We've achieved it. And that was the goal. So I think now we need to get this luxury fibre and think about what colour we're going to go with it from the sheet and I think I will go with this brownie colour down the bottom which is an olive brown and I'm just going to do it in this pot down here there I've might definitely managed to capture that there we go that one in the middle there is down there in that tray in that pot so that's fine I'm just gonna wait for that dye to evaporate and suck soak into that wool in there the wool and the silk and sorry the llama fibers and the rami and we'll get on to the last one for today's dye pot right so we're on our third colorway now which is this one here that's predominantly greens okay so we've got this dark gray up here and then we've got this chocolate brown and then this tan and then this bright green and there's a really soft green what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on this and I'm going to use an aubergine and I'm going to use the sand dune colour that I've got. So I'm literally only going to dye in two colours because I've got grey up the stairs and I've got some green shades as well. So I only really need to dye up my roving in two parts. So if I do that and that, but I think I might end up doing it with three parts. Oh, well, we've got chocolate brown, I've got aubergine there, and I've got two shades of green. So if I go with, I'll do three shades on this. If I go with a touch of avocado, and then add in some sage leaf, which is like a bluey green sort of hue. It's really, really quite pretty. And add that in. And that will change the dimension of that avocado green. And then the next piece, I'll just do sage leaf on its own. So you've got that foresty colour. So we'll let that just have a moment. I'll give it tongs and give it a swirl. And what I'm thinking is the sandy coloured one we will do in that fibre again. And I don't think I'm going to dye up any trilobal this time. I think I might use, I've got a lovely bronze peacock upstairs, um, which is like a two-dimensional coloured um, angelina. So I think I will use that for any type of sparkle that I might want to put into this one. So we're just going to, we only need three colourways on this one. So let that green soak away in that stock. We'll turn around so you can see. There we go. So I'm doing that green there. It will get, will get darker as the molecules start to melt properly, as I've said. Right, so again, there's the green done. I'm going to add in some of the sage. I'm going to do quite a bit because I want it to be quite bold and strong colour. I'll have to get this on my list to um, order some more. Okay. And then last will be the aubergine that I'll be putting in. So I need to just unravel that spare length there. Gets, there we go, that'll do. Add that in. Pull the fibre down a little bit so I don't end up with light patches. Now this is going to be more of a, a bluey green sort of colour. So I should really, theoretically, add in a different different shade of green just to bring it back up because it looks too um, looks too bluey so I need uh, what have we got what have we got what have we got teal green and I'll go with the emerald green it's probably a bit too bright for for this but I'll add some in because it's not a colour I use that often add in a dash of of this green, see how that works. It looks more foresty green. So I'll do. That will do. It'll all look nice in the end. Yeah. 
button here. I'm just looking to see the button here, the green shades that would suit. So we'll catch back with you in a minute once we get some more done. So that's the aubergine gone in there. It's a really, really dark, dark, ready purple colour. Um, and I ended up putting in that Lux Fibre in there as well with it. Cause I thought, well, yeah, I might have some fawny colour up the stairs in my stash. So I thought, right, I'll just leave it as is. Um, and then, yeah, so that's that's what that is. That's it done. So they're all going to go in the sink and get soaked and then in the spinner and it will be dry. It'll all be dry um, for me to start blending up on Sunday. So you guys will watch that video come up then. Um, if there's any questions, pop them down in the comments below on Patreon. Um, yeah, I'm supposed to be, I've got the rest of the day now to die. <laughs> I've got dying to do for, for bats for the website. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this series usual colours, um, greens, toffees, pinks, colours you can imagine all going together but they really will suit and complement each other really really well and I'm looking forward to seeing how these all turn out. I'm not sure if these are going to have enough fibre to make up some blend sets for them but I will try my hardest to make sure that happens even if they're only 100 grams each but we'll see what happens, I'm not going to make no promises because of the way that the fibre is structured on the Llama blend um, it's it's quite hard to separate and there's not a lot of fibre left over but we'll, I'll have a try I'll see if I'm my best if I can put some blend sets together but don't hold me to it if I can't so anyway take care of yourselves and I will see you on the first blend set of the Enchanted Forest okay so it's the next day and we've finished dyeing the colours for those okay and there Right, so the first colour where I'm going to go through in the results of the dye pot are these ones here. So we've got this grey coloured beige colour, we've got this darker green, and then we've got this toffee colour and fudge, I suppose, or fudge and toffee, whatever, and then into this chocolate brown. And I'm quite happy with the results that we've got from this. So I'll, rem I'll remind you again as well what the fibres are. I've just moved my coffee out of the way because I can see my elbow going to catch it in a minute. Right, so remember I lined up some of the fibres down the sides and everything else, but with this one, um, I just used that little separate pot, my little wasted enamel pot, which I wouldn't advise you to use one of those unless it's already broken, chipped and everything else, just for using it for small items, okay? So we ended up with this, when I was experimenting with the dye um, qualities and the colours that I was wanting to transfer together, um, I ended up with this yellowy hue, which is probably a little bit bright, but it's not to say that I can't use it, okay? Then we've got the darker green, which is perfect as this Firestar. And then we've ended up with this multicoloured or dual-toned trilobo with this toffee gingery sort of colour with this golden hue, which I think is probably the one I'd go for more than this one. But if I don't use it, it's not going to waste. I'll use it in something else. And then I dyed that luxury will okay and this i did with the chocolate brown so i've ended up with lots of different hues and colors in there you've got these pinky colors and you've got these browns and then you've got these gray brown colors and the sandy bits in there so that was the fiber that was um super fine merino with alpaca silk and cashmere so that's how it's dyed up okay and just take into mind that, that dye i already knew splits anyway into the colors it's made up from now the roving which was White face woodland, rami and um, white haired llama and bamboo in there, really pleased. So there is this mottledy, subtle sandy grey colour that's at the top of the palette. Then it went into the green and then it goes into this toffee colour and then there is the fudgy colour, which I'm really, really happy the way they've come out dead shoved so those are the ones that i'll be di um, blending up i say first i don't know i'm going to go over and start filming them in a bit once i finish this video and get it uploaded so you can watch die pop thursday um the next video you won't see till sunday night so we'll go through the next one which is this forest one okay so i dyed up that luxury fiber and i got this plummy brownie color 
okay and that's in that luxury fiber again then i got this green which is a little bit bright and vivid but who knows i might use it if not i'll definitely use this one in there just to bring together those sort of colors and with the roving that we dyed for this we have got this really dark gray color up the top and it goes into the different shades of greens that are on there there we go so it didn't turn out as expected but i don't mind because i have got colors that i can add to that to bring these colors up um i'll have a good root see if i've got any soft brown alpaca if not i've got some gorgeous brown um fair isle wool that's a natural brown so i don't even have to dye it so sometimes it's nice to add in some natural undyed wools into your blends especially if you're doing these earthy tones and then the last one that i did with this one here with the sun's the evening glow or the morning glow coming in through the woods so we've got these pinky shades so there not far off of it did all right with that one then this is the one that i added to the dye pot alongside the actual roving so that's my special blend my luxury blend now i've not done any green on this one because i don't want the green to be a predominant color the green's going to get added in as i blend along so there's the softer pink up the top a darker shade of it and then we end up with these darker pigments down here and then bringing in a softer sort of brownie fawny color um because i just i just wanted in a little bit of earth tones in there because that there is actually a brown color so i didn't want it too dark because i thought it would offset those colors but i'm quite pleased with the results that i've got so far so catch the next installment which will be on sunday evening or sunday afternoon anytime sunday it'll be released on sunday whether wherever you are in the world you will see it on sunday it will be the first episode of february's body clubs now body clubs joe do you know what i've been dying since eight o'clock this morning took me three hours to film the videos dying these up yesterday <laughs> all right don't worry this video is not three hours long <laughs> i'm a bit tired um for february storyteller art bats anyway i'm off to go and start filming those hopefully i can get them all done today and then i will get them uploaded on youtube and linked into patreon so they'll just drop in as time goes on anyway thank you very much for your support as usual um yeah, if you've got any friends that would really be interested, give them a shout and tell them to come pop over and have a, have a watch and have a look and maybe, fingers crossed, subscribe um, scrub and join up as a member. Really appreciate our community growing. But we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're up to, I think, 15, 14, 15 members at the moment, which is not bad because I've been going barely a month. Anyway, I'm off ski. Take care of yourselves and I'll um, catch up with you very, very soon. Bye for now. Toodle peeps. <laughs>